So really the way I recommend that you prepare for your final exam is through these three chapters in Portable TA. It's the final review problem set and the two practice final exams. And um, I noticed that as I was um, exporting out this printout um, that the author of Portable TA does say this, this collection of final exam review problem is particularly hard. <laughs> so do not get psyched out if you cannot solve all these review problems. And um, having seen some of these questions, I would probably agree. So uh, do take plenty of guidance from the author here when he says that this question is hard. That, um, yeah, I mean, you should do, um, at some point get used to seeing hard questions and you should know how to solve them. But I want you to know that I know that this is your first semester of general physics, that um, the ability to do the toughest question I can imagine or some other physics instructor can imagine, like that's not my primary goal here. Um, so this, so this is presented to you because it's in the portable TA and you know, spend some time looking at it. It's uh, um, like when you're exercising, you know, when you do weight lift, you sometimes lift weights that are way too heavy for you to lift uh, to, uh, too many reps with and doing that builds your muscle. It's the same thing with the problem solving. Sometimes you should attempt questions that are way too difficult for you to do well because that's how you build your problem solving muscle. So, um, so I don't know if I'll go over any one of these questions. Let's just look at each question and I will stop and actually work out in detail if a particular question catches my fancy. Um, let's see if a plan has been, uh, I mean, it's good for you to kind of know how to analyze it and uh, I will leave that for a portable TA answer. Um, uh, by the way, I uh, cut out all the pages that doesn't have question in this, all the uh, pages that look at should have a question. Uh, question of friction small sphere does not uh, roll without slipping. Instead slides down. Oh uh, yeah, that is, uh, <laughs> uh, it, it crucially never acquires enough rotational motion to roll without slipping. So this is actually a fairly difficult question. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, it is not clear how to approach this problem. And uh, I'm pretty sure the author will say, so one, some of the things you should know not to do is, um, is uh, don't use rolling without slipping condition because it explicitly tells you that doesn't happen. Two, um, you basically have to work out torque and you have to work out different uh, time parameters and um, use the fact that angular momentum, change in angular momentum is torque times duration of time. One thing that will help you is that when you are dealing with the kinetic friction, the magnitude of friction force will be constant. So you at least have that benefit in that your acceleration is constant and your uh, torque is constant. So angular acceleration is constant. So you can use that. Um, yeah, it's a, uh, I probably won't be asking you a question like this on your final exam, uh, but I, I think uh, reading through the answer that's in portable TA that should give you a kind of good way to break down problem, mechanics problem solving like this one. So I, uh, yeah, uh, but yeah, let's not uh, spend 30 minutes solving that. Um, oh, by the way, one thing you can kind of skip right away is um, so this is a kind of oscillation question that I've seen many professors like to ask. I don't like to ask it because it involves fluids and in this class we um, don't emphasize fluids. So, I mean, you can take a look at it for your own reasons. I can give you assurance that I will not ask this question because, because it involves fluids. Uh, it's, it's a good question, but uh, we skip fluids in this, or we mostly skip fluids in this class. Uh, two ropes, uh, sex in the middle. How much time does a wave? Um, this could be a good question that I could ask on the final exam. It's basically a, a it's kind of a, a kinematics problem solving, 
uh, tied with um, no, remembering some of the waves uh, factoid um, because uh, like this is the part of the kinematics problem solving that you have to learn to apply. So it, it's a good question and I don't think it's that, that hard. Um, so yeah, well, you can take a look at it uh, in the solution. I, uh, sorry, I only have like 30, 40 minutes left. I probably shouldn't waste the time on this. Um, but uh, so, uh, sorry, the waste, that was a forward choice. This, I like this question. <laughs> I'm thinking about how I might put this on the exam. I may not, but um, this is an illustration of the kind of problem solving skill that we want you to develop as you are going through this class. So yeah, okay, uh, meteor crashes, meteor crashes, lens on a, yeah, um, Uh, uh, um, I see what the question is saying. Um, I, I don't know if I like this rather convoluted description. Uh, I mean, look at it, but I, I, there's practically zero chance that you will see that exact question on your final exam. Um, oh, I, I like this one. Um, now, the challenge is that this is a difficult question. But I, I think this is a, a good uh, review of oscillation and rigid body rotation principles. Um, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. Look at the answer. It's uh, I, I. I think uh, it's a good question for you to look at. Uh, consider the system drawn below. Blocks masses are two blocks. If the little block were frictionless, what would happen? Um, yeah, this uh, is a pretty decent question. Um, so, so first the frictionless, and then it says now suppose set the friction. What is the biggest initial right velocity? That the, huh? Don't know why it says very hard. Uh, because it doesn't feel that hard to me. Let me look at the answers to see if I missed something. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, this is the exact uh, um, process you would go through. I guess um, he's probably calling it hard um, because the type of reasoning, so once you understand, the math here is very, not hard, but I think getting this is hard, um, especially if you haven't seen it before the exam, then uh, this could be challenging. But you know, um, I'll tell you this much. So there's enough in the solution there, so I don't need to spend time working through this problem. Um, I like the simplicity of this question. And uh, this question ties together standard strategy, oscillations, it could involve, with some modification, it could involve conservation of energy principles. So um, this is, once again, um, I, <laughs> no guarantees, no promises. I haven't written the exam yet. I can change my mind. Uh, I, I like uh, this setup. I might use that this as a starting place to write the final exam. It's uh, very possible. Um, it, yeah, uh, okay, let's keep going. Um, Frictionless, uh, oh yeah, this question. I think I have given, oh wait, sorry. I thought this was a different question. Perpendicular, oh, oh I guess the diagrams are, uh, I remember seeing the diagram, but I think they are in the answer, which is in the page I skipped. Um, I think I have given question like this um, in my other exams before. And, um, I guess uh, this is a good question involving conservation of momentum and angular momentum. And uh, I think, um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I agree, it's a hard. Um, I, I've given this question on an exam too, and homework. And I've seen people miss it, so I agree it's hard. Um, it's a good question. 
Uh, I can imagine, I could give a simplified version of the question. The, really the biggest constraint on me is that I only have enough time to ask you maybe three, um, uh, three multi-part free-form questions. So um, I need to find a context that can kind of pull in from different parts of the semester in a way that it's not overly challenging. So, yeah, but this is one of the good candidates. Um, oh. Uh, I, I guess I understand now why this question could be challenging. So you have to understand that as this block slides up here, it's going to have slower speed. So when you look at um, this block, leaving this point A, you have to remember they don't have less speed. And so yeah, it, uh, I mean, it's interesting. Maybe uh, I feel like I'll need to think this through. If uh, uh, somewhere along this point on the path, if uh, the block will uh, not get enough normal force, but it's an interesting setup. Take a look at it. Uh, it's a, I think it'll be a good practice for you to practice apply conservation of energy and conservation of momentum principles. And the setup that makes it good is that this is an unusual setup. This is unlike any other setup for which you have uh, uh, formulas that were derived in the textbook. And I, as I keep emphasizing, in this class, um, we are not looking for if uh, you are able to uh, plug in numbers into those formulas. Um, that, it, I mean, sometimes we do ask questions where all you have to do is plug in numbers in a formula that you already have, but those are the easiest possible questions in a physics class. Most of the time, what we want you to be able to do is gain the ability to derive those formulas from fundamental relationships. So, um, so yeah, this is a good setup to study that. Uh, okay, question 10. Uh, I remember looking at this with Edris. I was telling him that I probably won't be asking questions like this. And uh, I'll stick with that. Um, and to all that um, at an angle B thing, it makes things harder. Um, oh, oh, this is a good uh, static equilibrium question. I can easily ask that. But um, yeah, I'm, I like it. Um, so I'm looking at the time we have, 20 minutes. Um, <laughs> This is, so um, the other two resources that you have is the, I guess as long as we are looking at portable TA examples, I guess uh, I'm wondering what the value of it is in me solving through that. So uh, let me, let's do this so that I prioritize things correctly. Um, because really the portable TA is, the main resource, in addition to the past the final exam you have, the main resource I would say you should be using in preparation for our cumulative final exam. Frankly, uh, when I'm ready to write the exam, I'm gonna do this exact same thing again, except I'm not speaking to a camera that I know you will, you could watch it later. Um, so I think, uh, so this is the resource you should look at as you are preparing for your final exam. And I will um, give you my opinion of how the particular problem fits into the context of this class. And um, after having done that, uh, uh, so that you can kind of get a sense of which questions you can ignore as you're looking at the portable TA. And then um, if there's time remaining, hopefully 10, 15 minutes, I'll do maybe one question that I want you to do. So, now, what I will say is that portable TA has two practice final exams. And when I looked at them, they covered a substantially different um, range of topics. So I would say you should try both final exams. Um, and you know, it says something about uh, uh, you have three hours. Well, I guess you should be able to do this in three hours. But um, 
you should do the both. If you skip one practice final exam, there's a good chance that you uh, didn't adequately cover a particular set of topics. These two practice final exam are not equally distributed in topics distribution. So if you want to cover everything we cover in this class, you need to do some of all, both final practice final exams. So with that, let me just look at each question and I'll tell you how I feel. It's almost the first impression. I haven't spent too much time with these questions. Two blocks of mess. Uh, so these two blocks are hung over a pulley and messless rope. Um, messes are released. How much time does the pulley take to complete one revolution? Um, ah, that's a good question. So in order to, and now um, here's one thing that has me hesitating a little bit. This A it requires multiple parts for you to complete it. Uh, first, you have to figure out the acceleration of the blocks. So that's a standard strategy. Uh, once you figure out the acceleration, then um, you have to connect Let's see, so that's one piece you set aside. And uh, you have to here figure out how much total displacement uh, of the string one full revolution involves. That's the second piece. And then you have to put together those two pieces using constant acceleration kinematics to say it takes this much time for that much uh, tangential distance to move. All these pieces are doable, especially given one at a time. And I, what I figure is that um, a lot of people in this class will feel like when you are asked to this, like you're just lost. Like, what do I do next? Um, so <laughs> that's my only hesitation, but th that's a good question. It's a, um, it, yeah, that's a good question. I, I, I think it's a, um, it, it really does test your understanding of physics in a context that's not over complicated. Okay, what time will the smaller mass crash into the pulley? And the, somehow B is easier than A. Uh, I might kind of ask them in different order. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, two, uh, block of mass and start, yeah, uh, uh, from the top. Slides frictionlessly, uh, A, B to C. What is block speed at point A? That seems pretty easy. Uh, conservation of energy, I mean. Uh, B, you know, did I ask this question on, I might have asked this on one of the midterm exams. So this would be actually one of the easier questions I can ask. Uh, uh, I don't wanna say it's too easy, uh, I'll have to look at how well you people did um, on the particular midterm exam. Because here's the thing, um, what I said about uh, multiple choice questions, I feel similarly with uh, your uh, free form portion. So uh, mark of a good student is that you don't miss the same question twice. So if there's a free form question I asked on the midterm exam and I feel like a lot of people, too many people missed it. I could easily incorporate parts of that into your final exam. So, um, <laughs> so the fact that this is the type of question that uh, I could have asked, could have, could have asked, and maybe even did ask on the midterm exam, don't let that stop you from studying it. Uh, study it until you feel you completely understood it. Okay, question three. In outer space, meteors collide. Uh, what fraction of they stick together? Oh, wow, this is, this is an interesting question. Huh. Huh. I feel very similarly with the question three, the way I did with the question one, in that it's a, it's a really good question because it, um, the question it asks is a very simple, but the way you approach it is not simplistic. Like if you, for example, had memorized um, um, like uh, energy lost in completely inelastic collision, 50% uh, and put that down as the answer to this, you'll get it wrong because that formula you memorized is for one dimensional collision. This is a two dimensional collision 
So uh, I guess I need to work it out to see. There's a good chance that uh, the fractional kinetic energy lost here will not be 50%. So you just need to work it out. You treat this as a two-dimensional collision, have x component of momentum conserved separately from the y component of momentum. You'll need to work out the speed to get the kinetic energy. So the only thing that has me hesitating is um, um, how little time we spent on two-dimensional collision. So if I were to put this as our exam, uh, I might have to give you more guidance because I'm treating this as basically a completely new scenario you'll see. So on this, in situations like this, I really try to make sure that I'm not being tricky, that I don't, because this part, it, this could be considered very tricky because it's the simplicity of the setup invites people to put in memorized answers and when you do, you'll get it wrong. Um, so uh, uh, this is a good question. I, I, uh, I, I can imagine asking modified version of this question. Um, Sand drum below, oh, I guess that's below. It's embedded in a truck. Um, accelerate rightward, mass will eventually settle. Yeah, yeah. well, it's amplitude the resulting oscillation of the block. Um, <clears throat> oh, uh, at time t torque abruptly stops. Um, it's an okay question. I, I think at the first couple of semesters I was teaching, I asked the questions like this on exam one. <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, I'll, it's a good question. Um, it's a good way to review oscillations. And um, maybe part A gets at some of the, your understanding of forces. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I think as an oscillation question, it can be simpler. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> Water pump. Oh, oh, I can tell you something about this right away. Because it's dealing with the water being pumped in, where uh, it's flowing out, and you have to worry about basically velocity of water, I can tell you, ignore question five. It involves too much fluid mechanics. I will not be testing you on things that involve this much uh, fluid mechanics. Even though the part B um, is a good kinematics question, um, I cannot have that rely on your understanding of Bernoulli's principle. So, um, yeah, so you can, you can skip this question as you're studying. It'll maybe cut down on time you'll have to spend. Uh, okay, question six, a thin rod of mass wanted by all uh, rope of mass, length fastened, rod makes angle. Oh, what? Oh, oh, I see that. Um, um, okay, if I were to ask this question, I will definitely give you the figure. So I was imagining something different entirely. Um, you may assume that rope is plugged. The rod does not jiggle significantly. Oh, yeah, so when I said um, I can give you a better a wave question, it's a, a question like this that I was thinking of. I remember looking at this with that reset. I uh, saying, hey, this is a good combination of static equilibrium and uh, uh, waves. And uh, yeah, something like this is exactly what I'm thinking of when, I, um, when I'm thinking of a freeform question that um, incorporates a greater portion of the semester. That this one requires to remember enough about uh, static equilibrium to calculate the tension in the ropes. And then it has you use, uh, use that, uh, oh. Yeah, so for part A, I might give you more guidance to walk you through those steps that you'll need. So use that tension to ca calculate the velocity of wave on the rope. Once you have that velocity, then um, after figuring out the geometry, you have information to answer A. So, you know, um, some of, many of these questions, um, if the ones that I think are good, uh, I will probably be, if I use that in our final exam, I'll end up needing to modify them because um, it's good when I see it and I have been doing physics since, wow. Uh, I have been doing physics for, if I'm counting from the first time I had a physics class for uh, 17 years. 
So with my 17 years of experience, uh, this, this sounds wonderful. I can imagine all the steps you have to go through to get the answer. But what I do understand is that you don't have 17 years of experience with the physics. Some of you haven't been alive that long. <laughs> and, um, and you could use some guidance for that four step problem solving. Um, so, um, but yeah, it's, uh, with the additional guidance that I, I am inclined to provide, this is a great question. Uh, so. And you know, when you are looking at this question and then looking at portable TA answers, um, you know, you have all the guidance there. So um, especially if it's a question that you have seen from portable TA and then you see them again on the exam, you should do pretty well. But I guess, uh, okay, I, I should tell you this much so that you don't freak out um, that as I'm writing my, even though I'm strongly recommending that you look at portable TA, that you study from portable TA, and I hope you do study from portable TA, but when I'm writing the exam, uh, my standard won't be based on someone who looked at the portable TA. Um, uh, it should be doable by someone who, who is seeing the question for the first time. Uh, now your chance of doing well on the question will improve significantly if you have seen it before. But even if you haven't seen it before, I think you will be able, to, I will write it in a way that you can still do it. Okay, uh, the next, uh, so this is the other final, practice final exam. Um, let me just give you my opinion on each question. Question one, oh yeah, you can skip this question entirely. It involves too much fluid mechanics. I cannot really use it. Um, yeah, so I, I can't use it. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, yeah. Question two, uh, pretend the solar system consists or it is a proxy circular, how much time? I already, uh, uh, did I, uh, well, I guess it is orbit question. Um, when the ball is very far away, what is the speed of wheel with respect to the sun? Um, I mean, it's an okay question. I'm not as, I guess I feel like this in, involves too much gravity and too little um, other mechanical principles. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, you, you can look at it, I, I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, I have done something like this, draw a rough sketch of Earth's new orbit around the sun. And what the author wants you to draw is an elliptical orbit for the Earth. And I have done something like this with a, a kind of pendulum type question where I said, uh, okay, uh, you have some rigid uh, rod pendulum that barely goes one full circle around. And then imagine it changes into just a rope what's its trajectory. So I think you could have benefited from kind of learning that thought process um, because, you know, eventually all physicists kind of tend to think alike. Um, but so, I mean, you know, you could have benefited from that, but uh, you know, so reading this question, I'm not, uh, I'm overcoming the enthusiasm for stealing the question for my exam. <laughs> Let's just leave it there. I mean, it's an okay question. Uh, I think you should read it and study it. Uh, <laughs> Okay, in this problem, cards consisting of four walls in a body, and flaw, falls off the body. Uh, I think it's over complicated. I mean, it tests you for the right concept, kinematics, dynamics, um, and uh, connecting the rotational motion to translational motion. I think it's overcomplicated, um, but I, I, that the reason I the the fact that I feel it's overcomplicated shouldn't stop you from still studying it because um, it'll teach you the principles that are useful to you. Okay, but, oh, this is the figure frictionless uh, 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 police. Oh wait, no, this is still with the going question. Okay, question for it, it's going with, I think this one. Okay, see, so, uh, pull is approximately a uniform solid, this pivoted at the center. 
Oh, I think I remember seeing this question. Uh, and that he gives you pulleys, mass, and the radius. Um, yeah, smoothly of the ramp, slides along. How far will the block compress the spring from equilibrium? So this is a conservation of um, it's a conservation question. Uh, the only thing I don't like so much is this statement. When the block slides off the bottom of the ramp, the rope goes slack. Uh, that's an ad hoc. I mean, you know, if uh, um, you can visualize what that's happening and how that impacts the conservation equation you'll be writing, then I, I think that's fine. Um, and I guess that's a necessary simplification that the author had to give you. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But basically what it is, is you have to calculate what the rotational kinetic energy of the pool is the moment the block reaches the bottom of the ramp um, and have to take that into account as you're doing conservation of energy from the beginning to, to all the way to the end. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I'm also not enthusiastic about this question. <laughs> uh, I, I think I'm much more enthusiastic about up to this point. Um, the block is uh, released from rest, the, the bottom of the lamp, ramp, and then it reaches the bottom because when the block reaches the bottom, that's a, a really good um, conservation of energy setup. Um, you involving rotational kinetic energy. Um, it's the rate remainder that I feel that is enthusiastic about. Um, question five, consider a long thin rod with a, a solid, small solid sphere. Corner of the rod. Oh, oh, this is a version of the, um, um, well, okay. Um, it, this question five here, is similar with uh, this question, uh, question six here, in that it involves static equilibrium. Um, I think you could have, one could use the setup in a very similar way to uh, use this to uh, set up a question about standing waves on this rope. And it's an opportunity missed, which means I could do that on my final exam. <laughs> and, and then um, I guess what I was trying to do instead is um, use this as a starting point and then have a question about rotational motion. Um, one that uses uh, uh, conservation of energy to uh, have you do rigid body rotation, uh, which is fine. Um, yeah, but I actually like this setup. Uh, it can be expanded into type of question I want to ask. Um, let's see, question six, computer hard disk. Um, four little protrusions. Clicking. Um, piece of dirt has mass. Before the ball, notice the wavelength of sound produced by the. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't like this question. One, um, it, it's an factual inaccuracy. Um, yeah, you can hear the faster pace, the clicking is a high pitched one. Well, I guess you could. Um, the thing is, when you talk about wavelength, you're usually dealing with a sinusoidal wave, and here you definitely don't have something that's sinusoidal. So, uh, I, I, you can ignore question six. I cannot imagine that I will be asking you this question. I mean, you know, it involves conservation of angular momentum, but I can ask a better question on conservation of angular momentum. <laughs> You can ignore question six. I, I, I don't think I'll be using this question. 
So I guess that's uh, um, all my opinions on these questions. Um,